Hello, and welcome to this E4Clicks Project Estimator training video, Creating a Project. Today we're going to look at a couple of different ways to create a project. One of those includes setting a default performance period. So we'll jump into that, exactly what that means as we go through here. All right. Now, as this is one of our first training videos, we're going to spend a little bit more time walking through some of this, the basic stuff, all right? So maneuvering around and doing that kind of stuff. So um, we'll hit some of those different highlights and we'll try to add a little bit in each video. Okay, so to get to this point where we started here, we've basically opened up E4Clicks and E4Clicks opens by opening the projects window for us here. Okay, so to open up E4Clicks, we found and double clicked on our desktop icon, typed in our username and password, and then clicked the OK button. Boom, E4Clicks opens up opens up the projects window that shows us our list of projects. If it's your first time, you probably don't have any projects, uh, but as you go along, you'll get more and more projects. Okay, so we want to get to work. This video is going to talk about how to create a project, which would be one of the first things we would do, obviously. So how do we find our list of menu commands to actually do something inside of E4Clicks? Okay, if we look at the top, we can see a bunch of Dust, or, uh, toolbar icons here that we could use, but let's see where those actual menu options come from, and then as we get comfortable, we could go use any of those icons. E4Clicks has a program or activities button down here at the bottom left of every window, okay? This activities button changes names based on the window that we're looking at. So in this case, we're on the projects window, so the button is called Projects. If we were looking at Estimates, it'd be the Estimates button. If we were looking at Line Items, it'd be the Line Items button. I think you're catching on to the pattern. All right, so if we wanted to do something to our list of projects here, we would click on the Projects button to get our list of menu commands. Okay, specifically we're going to look at the top two here today, inserting a new project, and then maybe we get into some of those others in other videos. All right, now, what we like to say at four clicks is, if in doubt, right click, okay? So, instead of coming all the way down here to the projects button every time, what we can do is if we're over here in our list of projects, we can simply right click and get those exact same menu commands, similar to you do in any other program, all right? And we'll be able to get to the top two insert ones. Let me just show you one more thing. When we say right click, we're normally talking about the white area in the window, okay? So it's the main list, or browse sometimes we say, of the window. So for projects, it's going to be the list of projects, okay? So if we went up here to the filter status panel and we clicked on the filters button, we're going to see that we have different menu options for this panel right here. If we right-click in this, this area, we're going to see those same menu items as the filters button. So it does matter where you right click. And when we say right click, we normally mean this white area right here, okay? Which is the main list of whatever we're looking at. That's just to clarify there a little bit. All right, so let's jump in and let's do this thing. When we right click, we have two menu commands. One is to insert a new project after selecting a performance period. And the second one just says insert for now, but it's actually a placeholder for our favorite contract. Okay, so we'll hit that at the end of this. Let's come up and look at this top one for now. Inserting new project after selecting a performance period. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to explain what performance period means in this case. When we say performance period in this case, we're actually looking at which contract we want to associate this project with. Okay, many of you have multiple year contracts. So when we say performance period, we mean the performance period of the actual contract. Okay, sometimes called the contract year. So in this case, this contract has this name and we're in this contract year. So when we select a performance period, we're actually associating our project with a contract and the associated active contract year. This is pretty cool. E4Clicks allows you to put information in one time and then use that information again and again, so like plug and play. We don't have to memorize contract numbers. We don't have to figure out start and completion dates. Um, we're going to see in a second here totaling, which are markups. We're going to see that we can 
set those up once in the program and then just use those out of the library to make it super easy. So how do we choose this contract to associate with our project? There's a couple different ways. Again, I won't go through this every time, but I want to show you some of the different ways as this is one of our first videos. Most of these are all going to be common um, ways that you would do it in any program. If we wanted to select this, you're right. We could just double click on this and be good. All right. If we wanted to use our keyboard, we could use our up and down arrow keys to come to this, hit the enter key on the keyboard, and we would select it. We're E4 clicks, so if in doubt, we're going to be able to right click on this and select select. All right. So all those ways are going to work. If we can't remember some of those ways, we're going to show you visually here how to do this. So we could highlight this and then hit the select button and we'd be golden. One quick thing to note here is we could also come and select none. So we could associate this project without any contract. So if we wanted to do a contract later or just one of this, we don't know how we're going to execute it. We could click here and select none and no contract would be associated with our project. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And then that'll open up the select totaling schema window. All right, totaling schema. Normally when we get the total of our project, it will be all of our line items added up and then some markups on top of that. So profit, overhead, bonding, that kind of stuff. Profit, overhead, and bonding, we just call those, each one of those individually, totaling components. Okay, they're just different components of the totaling. All right. Now, if we group that same, those same components again and again in the same way, we just call that group a totaling schema. So what this allows us to do again, just like contracts, is to put the information in once and then just grab and go. So you don't have to create different items every single time to figure out all your totaling. You just grab and go. In this case, we're doing a saber job, so we're going to have a coefficient. We can see that there's two different ones, non-standard hours and standard hours. We're going to go ahead and choose this one right here and associate our, our use the totaling for that. Again, there's a couple of different ways we can choose this. We can right click and do select. We can double click. We can hit the enter key. Or we can come down here, select, and if we don't want any, again, we can select none. Before we leave here, I just want to show you a point one thing out. Because we're associated with a contract, we have a cool filtering tab over here that's for contract. So these con these totaling schemas are actually associated with this contract somewhere here inside of E4Clicks. We could also switch over to all of the active totaling schemas if we wanted to, the inactive or all of the active and inactive. I'm going to stay with the contract ones for this, but I just wanted to point that out so you may use that at some point. I'm going to come over here and select the standard ones. Now we get to the main window here that we've been waiting for. Okay, so we can see that we've associated a contract here and we can actually see that we've slapped on our default totaling schemas. Okay, now we have two required fields that we need to put in on every project. All right, if you're sharp of eye, you can see the two highlighted fields here and those are going to be those required ones. I'm going to type in 161,000 and construct new building. So these two blue ones are required. If we tried to click the OK button without having either one of those included, E4Clicks will take our cursor up to that field and make us put something in before it allows it to go on. Okay, So this will make them unique in our database here. Now there's all kinds of other information that we could type in here and associate with our, our project, but these are the main two ones, the two required ones, and then obviously we associate our contract and then our default totaling schema. If for whatever reason we made a, uh, a mistake or wanted to change something, we could use this pull down to change our contract. We could use this pull down to change our schema. Okay. So for example, we could use this pull down or double click in the field either way. And we could see our list of totaling schemas or groups of totaling and then associated with each one, are the different totaling components, kind of as I was telling you about. So in this case, you can see that we're going to use these totaling components to get to our grand total. I'm just going to cancel out of here because I'm happy with this. All right, you could type in any other information you wanted to hit here. And when you were ready to add this, officially record it, we will record 
will be added when we click. The record will be added when we click the OK button. When we do that, it returns us to our list of projects with the new project highlighted. So we can see it right there. All right, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So we kind of saw all the different uh, moving parts of how to create a new project. But before I let you go, I want to show you that second option. Okay, again, we're going to right click to insert a new project. The second option just says insert for now. But it's it's what it's waiting for is for us to set a default contract. So I'm going to come and hit insert the first time we do it before it's associated. We get that same selective performance period window. Let's say that 90% of our jobs use this contract right here. So instead of choosing this every single time, what we can do is set this as our default. Notice there's no asterisks over here, so we can see that there's no default. How do we set a default? If you've been paying attention, you probably said right click. We come down here, right click. Our second option here is set as default performance period. So when we click that, we notice now that there's a little asterisk to the left of the contract number and that denotes that as our favorite, all right, our default. Now I'm going to cancel out of this process because I don't want to insert it. What I want to do is come back to our list of projects, right click, and now show you that we can insert using a default performance period and it put that contract in there and we can use that real quickly and skip over that selected performance period window. Okay, so if we click on it this time, boom, we go straight to selecting our totaling schemas and we skipped that and saved a couple seconds. All right, so again, I'm gonna cancel out of here because that's what I wanted to show you. So hopefully that shows you a couple different ways to create a project, walks through some of the different key and important fields, all right, and it kind of explains what a default performance period is and kind of sets you up with some of that information. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please check out our other videos or give us a call if you need anything. Have a wonderful, fantastic day. Thanks so much.